Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to discuss fluid thioglycolate media. So fluid thioglycolate media is designed to test a bacteria's aerotolerance. So what is aerotolerance? Well, aerotolerance is the ability for any organism to live in the presence of molecular oxygen, or O2. This is the oxygen that we breathe. This is the oxygen that's required to support the metabolic needs of our cells. Okay, that's the oxygen in the atmosphere. And it turns out that some bacteria uh, really like to have oxygen and require it to survive, and some can't survive with oxygen, and then some really aren't that picky. And this test will will describe each bacteria's aerotolerance. Now, the actual medium is made with what's called a high oxygen concentration. Okay? Now, the other ones are kind of a little, can be a little bit confusing. We actually have three others. One of them's not shown here, but I'll explain it in a minute. These two are kind of similar. So we have facultative anaerobes and aerotolerant anaerobes. Sometimes we just call it aerotolerant. So with a facultative anaerobe, these bacteria tend to grow better at high oxygen concentrations, but if there's no oxygen, they can actually switch their metabolism to being more anaerobic and survive to some extent in anaerobic conditions. So with facultative anaerobes, the key to their growth is you'll see it without the, uh, throughout the tube, but it'll be highest up at the top where you have a high oxygen concentration. But there still will be some at the bottom where it's low. And so facultative anaerobes, you'll see it throughout the tube, but it's going to be highest at the top, and then it'll kind of taper off as you go towards the bottom.
Okay. Now, if you have something that's arrow tolerant, it might look similar to that, except for the fact that generally when you have an arrow tolerant bacteria, the growth is actually the same throughout the entire media. And there's one more called a microaerophile, which we'll actually look at on this slide, um, where we actually have real life examples, and we can kind of do this as sort of a quiz. Well, here I have letter A. What kind of arrow tolerance does this bacteria have? Well, Clearly, in this case, there's growth throughout the medium. And you might say, well, is it aerotolerant or a facultative anaerobe? Well, C is a facultative anaerobe because you have this high growth at the top here, and then it kind of tapers off as you go to the bottom. Okay, So C has the characteristic pattern of a facultative anaerobe. In the case of A, it more or less has homogeneous growth throughout, not really much difference between the top and the bottom. So A would be aerotolerant. Okay, so one of the things that's harder to differentiate is aerotolerant tolerant and facultative anaerobe, but just think about is it more homogeneous or does it taper off towards the bottom as you have in facultative anaerobes. All right, in B, we don't have any growth at the top. You can see it's clear up there, but the growth is all at the bottom, the bottom half, so to speak. So in that case, B, we have an obligate anaerobe because we have no growth up, up the top where the oxygen is high, all the growth is at the bottom where the oxygen is lower. Okay? And then E, what is this? Well, this is an obligate aerobe because all the growth you can see here is up at the very top where oxygen is the highest, but down here we don't have any growth because there's no oxygen down there. And what you'll notice it's very interesting, look at the cutoff point for obligate aerobe in E. So it starts at the top and then goes down to here. So the oxygen concentration seems to drop off kind of right here. Then if you go over to the anaerobe, that's where the obligate anaerobes pick up. So there's kind of a sort of a cutoff point, if you do this correctly, where the oxygen concentration gets to a threshold that's low enough where obligate aerobes stop growing and then obligate anaerobes start growing. So just something to think about. And then the last one we have, which is D, this is the one which I didn't have on the previous slide. This is a microaerophile. So microaerophiles, they don't really survive in really high oxygen concentrations, but they, so they survive at sort of a thin range of oxygen concentration that's not too high, but it's kind of medium so to speak. So notice we don't have any growth in this anaerobic region. We don't have growth in the super aerobic region, but it's kind of right here in this thin range where the oxygen can't be too high, but it also can't be too low. And it's usually a thin little cylindrical section like this. And that would be characteristic of a micro aerophile. All right. So these are the growth patterns, what to look for when you're dealing with analyzing the fluid thioglycolate media for aerotolerance. In another video, we'll actually discuss why each of these types of bacteria with the different aerotolerances grow in the way they do, and it actually has to do with the enzymes they possess, their metabolism overall. We'll cover that in another video, but hopefully this video gave you a little bit of intuition on how to characterize the fluid thioglycolate media for each species aerotolerance. All right, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in class.